Good morning everyone, Pinchy Al here and on today's episode of the Patreon built MK4 Jetta uh, we're gonna do an entire interior removal and cleanup because man this car has seen better days but you know what we do here at Pinchy Al's Garage is you know fix one Mark IV at a time so let's get to work because this is Pinchy Al's Garage see inside this car's interior is that some of it's pretty clean I mean it's super impressive and how clean the original seats are front and back um, I mean this has you know typical dirt door cards are beautiful so there's a lot of things that I'm going to save in this car because it's really really well taken care of from the owner that we got it from the only thing that is going away obviously is the <laughs> dash mat not a fan of these things um, so we're gonna yank this off and see if there's any damage done underneath if there is we're pulling the dash out and we're gonna go to the junkyard and get a new dash get rid of these uh, sporty things here <laughs> get rid of these bad boys the pedals I'm really liking the wood trim in this car very very well because it's actually intact you guys don't understand how rare it is to find Mark IVs with clean, clean wood trim that isn't completely shattered or broken and destroyed. So that's something we're going to consider keeping. Um, the headliner is really nice. Looks like it's been redone, but unfortunately it's got tons of these weird stains in it. It's a nice suede, but it's going to be going out. Unfortunately, we're ripping it out. Um, we're going to put in a new, new headliner in it. Um, yeah, whatever happened to the previous owner, I mean, they taped it. Yeah, this is this needs some work. So, yeah, we're going to be redoing all of this. Uh, we got two headliners that we're going to choose from. I think we're going to do a gray and red headliner. Um, same with the pillars. All the pillars are going to be changed out. Um, we're going to rewrap the, the trunk cover. Or the deck lid. I mean, you can see that this interior is stupid clean. I mean, it's impressive in how well taken care of this uh, interior is. Um, we're gonna pull the trunk out. We're gonna pull all the seats out. We're gonna shampoo and clean the carpet. See if we can get the carpet to be nice and clean again. We gotta pull the steering wheel out. Get a new steering wheel for it. Maybe uh, something a little sportier, since we are gonna be building a. A uh, performance engine for this car, so let's get to work. We got a lot to do today. So first thing you need to do is pull the back out. The back is the easiest thing you'll ever have to pull out. So these guys go up like this. I don't have the. I already yanked them out a little bit, but I'm gonna show you guys the actual process here. They're super easy. See these little um, hooks? They hook into here. And then you just pinch one side and the other and then pull up and then yank out the seat. It's super, super easy. Same with the passenger side. Repeat the process. What's harder is actually the, um, the actual back seat itself. The bottom is the easiest part to do. The back seat requires a little bit of effort, uh, a little bit of tooling actually. So. What you're going to need to do is open your seats up. You're going to pull your floor carpet back. Okay. And what it is is that they hook into here and they have a little hook here. 
this hook right here, you need a flathead to pry it in, and then it should give you the ability to yank it up and out like that. <laughs> Well, let's see here. Yeah, these get stuck all the time on their way out. There you go. So, when you yank this one out, you see that little hook right here. That's what kind of locks it in place. But on the other side, to get that one out, uh, there is a center bolt for the... Uh, for the middle seat belt that's right here. You have to unbolt it from down here to get it out. And then that will allow you to get this one out same way that we got this guy out. Okay, so I just noticed that I bumped the camera. Uh, so right here is a little hook. Again, flyhead screwdriver, pry it back. This guy comes out with ease. This one is a little bit more effort. You have to unbolt the seat belt right here from the middle. Um, if there is a bolt to access, I don't see it. I think it's on the other side. There it is. So there's a bolt down here to access the uh, seat belt. So you're gonna need to unbolt that. And then um, same process, push the hook back, pull it up, pull it out, and then get that seat out. So we got my flathead and my sockets here. So a lot of stuff here. I'm get right here and then see that hook right there. This so really makes a difference again these seats out. Just like that. And then it should allow you to pull right up. And then that should give you the access you need to the seat belt right here, down below. Now I think it's a 16 or a 17. 17 it is. Now if you're going to plan on keeping the back seats, uh, make sure you keep all your hardware in order so that way you don't lose stuff during the uh, process here. You guys don't understand. Mixing up hardware, losing hardware is a pain because then you end up going to go buy stuff you don't need to buy when you already had it. But you know, it's your guys' choice. So, unbolting that gives you the ability because it unbolts the seat belt. We're going to open that door, we're going to yank the seat out that way, and then get it out. So, there's that seat belt. Just make sure if it stays intact like this, just leave it with it. This sucker's a little heavy, so just I'm gonna take it out to the other side. So now that we got the back seat removed, it's now to get the trunk cleared out. So trunk cover. I'm telling you, this car was so well taken care of. I love it. Trunk cover isn't anything special, just pull out and go. What we're going to be pulling out as well though is the uh, entire monsoon system in here. What's super cool is that the owner of this car, 6 disc CD changer, it's still got the monsoon amp. It's got the uh, upgraded monsoon radio, so this is actually a really nice stereo system that we're going to probably put up for grabs online as soon as I get everything taken out. Um, so yeah, I mean, everything was retained in this car. You guys don't understand how rare this is to find a Mark IV with everything in it. That isn't beat. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I remember this had a, an entire tow hitch set up to it, so we're going to have to find out how it was wired um, make sure it wasn't actually destroyed uh, you can see they jumped the wiring built into it so it's not that bad but it's missing the entire 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll see when I get to it. Hopefully it's not too bad. So back seats are done. Trunk is done. Next is the front. Now the front um, requires a little bit more, a little bit more attention. So um, if you ever taken seats out of a Mark IV, they're held by these little two screws down here. There's one, two bolts. Um, since this is powered, uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do since uh, I don't have a battery plugged into this. And the battery that we do have is no bueno. Um, we're going to have to figure out how we're going to be able to slide it and unbolt it. We might have to do like an extension and unbolt it and see if that works out really well. Um, carpet's a little on the beat side, but again, it's not that bad. And then once the seats are out, we're going to show you guys how to pull the headliner out safely without damaging it. Um, because there are a lot of things that you guys will notice or end up doing with uh, when pulling a headliner out is people just like to yank things out and there's actually a, a straight process for it so we'll show you what to do so you guys can see all the wires there those all have to come out you'll see the two holes right here those are the two T40s that you need to unbolt once you unbolt them then you'll see what you have to pull out but before you do all that make sure that your uh, seat rail covers are removed because if not the seat won't come off these are the seat rail covers here. They're held by a Phillips screw right back there. Take that off and then the seat can just roll right out. So all four seat rail covers on the back have to remove have to be removed through the back. They use a Phillips. They have a little plastic cover like this. You pop them out, use a Phillips screw, one screw per rail and just pop them all off and then you can take the seat out but remember all the wires on the back of the seat I mean the bottom of the seat because uh, they're very important yank those guys out and then pull your seat out so on the harness they're pretty easy these uh, these three right here they just yank right out uh, once you yank them out see this little white clip you're gonna have to pull the little white clip from the top kind of like so See that has to be pulled up and out, and then you'll be able to pull the uh, airbag light or wire, and then this guy out uh, after the fact. So remember that you got to do those. You cannot do this uh, with the seat actually pulled out. You got to move the seat kind of back and lean it like towards the back, like this, so that way it gives you access to that. Uh, your hardware you can leave it there for the moment but I would recommend bolting it back onto the bottom of the seat that way you don't lose it but this is it this is all that holds the seat in place just so you guys know two little bolts you're gonna repeat the process on the passenger side and then that'll conclude pretty much removing the uh, the seats the back seats and the front seats of the car um, we're gonna try to remove this center console next um, and then all the top portion of the carpet. Um, if the carpet is easy to remove, depending, because on some Mark IVs, the carpet is not easy to remove. We will remove it. If not, we're just going to leave it in place and just fix things as we see it. Uh, once that seat is removed, the next step is the headliner. So, I took the dash cover off, took off all the adhesive that was on here, and the damage is done, unfortunately. I mean, I can try to clean it up as best I can, but I think I think there's already uh, it's already been damaged with the sun and staining. I'll see what I can do with some armor all and some degreaser and see if I can actually fix it. But if I can't uh, remove the stains off of the dash, I'm gonna go pick up another dash from the junkyard. Um, we're definitely gonna get rid of the Mark IV steering wheel. Uh, we're gonna go over some little again, something sporty. We'll show you guys how to remove that. Super easy. Um, seats are all taken out back to the headliner <laughs> so step one on your headliner you gotta re oh, uh, remove all these little pieces so this all the handles it has a little screw cover right here 
and they use a Phillips screwdriver so you want to do that on all four of those after that you want to do the lights the two lights here the sun visor which is held by a screw right here take that off over there the sun visor clips this thing this piece comes out there's two screws here to hold it in place once that's all removed then you take the pillars off once you take all the pillars off then the headliner can come out and you can yank it out through the passenger door um, just take your time because you can bend it and crack it so you guys can see here you pull the flaps down and then it exposes the two Phillips screws that you need so all four handles are gonna you're gonna have to do that okay so this is the one that's a little bit more difficult and I, I kid you guys not take the cover off the screw but you'll see this is kind of hooked in so usually you pull push in pull back and then pull forward and it should give you there it is and then just be careful not to damage the wire for that and yank it out and usually they can just let you yank them right out without any damage so um, should be pretty straightforward repeat the process for the other one this guy right here um, you can do it I think you should be able to pick it with a, a little pick here just like that and then it's got two screws one here and one right here pull those out that should be enough um, the lights don't hold the headliner up but I like to pull the lights out that way when the headliner comes off the wires don't yank and damage anything all right so now that we got everything removed from the headliner almost everything just that last piece I usually leave that for uh, after I remove the pillars next step is all the seat belts have to get removed so do that next I believe it's a 16 or a 17 we're gonna confirm that right now that's a 17 let me see what 16 feels like yeah 17 so all the seat belts have to be removed once you remove the seat belts then you have access to taking the pillars off once all the pillars are removed then we'll show you what to do next all right so so this uh, headliner and all the pillars have been removed difficulty removal is not as bad however for you first timers I'm going to show you guys a trick here now one thing that you guys will know or notice you'll see here and there there's that clip right here this these four clips when you yank these out you don't yank down you don't yank up you yank straight across and they'll pop um, the big issue with the um, pillars on these cars is that they're on very very tight so when you start yanking just yank in one direction don't start prying okay because the big difference is that if you pry versus just yanking it, you pry it, you're going to actually bend and damage it um, very, very easily. So, uh, the original owner, again, you see there's tape here. He broke it there. Um, they're not hard to break, so just take your time and just pull straight away. Don't pull down. If you pull in a downward motion, you're going to bend them. They're going to yank and they're going to bend and crack. Just like that so yeah if you do have um, like a plastic forks to, to get you from in the back and pull up and pry from the back then definitely do that but if you don't again grab from here here and then pull at the same time in one direction um, and you'll be able to yank them right out for example over here I'm gonna go from back here and then just pull one direction and then they get caught down there at the bottom and that's it if you pull down it won't go but I pull this way and it comes right out so that's how you do the the pillars in the back so you can get this all nice and loosey-goosey um, he didn't hook it in to the back here so you'll notice that's why there's a droop here um, whenever you put the headliners in you hook it in through the front and then you push back and they'll, it'll go in they have a very specific way of going on so those are done 
and we're going to go down and work over here now if you have the factory again if you have the factory covers on here uh, there's a hole right around here and he's probably left it there there's a hole here there's a little plastic cover that says airbag you pop that off there's a screw there so this pillar can come off now these are a little trickier and I'll show you what I mean when I get this removed so we can show you what to do so once you take the seat bill off you're gonna grab from up here or over here somewhere where you can get your hand inside the little hook there it is a little hook here and you kind of pry outwards and then just like that and it's only held by this one and this one here um, the hook right here is what really matters uh, if you want your interior to look clean so the guy who wrapped this went too far over and you'll notice that there's like a bubble in here so when these bubbles exist when you put it in here it does not grab so over time with the heat or you going in and rubbing it it just pops open and it just looks terrible so I mean he did a really good job on wrapping it on the front of it cosmetically but I guarantee you if he would have taken his time uh, and cutting this made trimming this material and gluing it nicely it would have been an easier fit and it would have been a much more nice firmer fit on here um, I mean can't come really complain I mean he still did a really good job it's just this material it's just, uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan. But we'll get to it. We have to unwrap all of this and then redo all of it again. I thought it was actual suede. It's actually not suede. It's like a suede-ish design. Suede, suede adjacent. <laughs> there you go. Skinning a rabbit. Have you guys ever skinned a rabbit before? I have. <laughs> a couple snakes too. Just yank. Um, yeah, see all this foam... Uh, this is why when people wrap these things, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to wrap on top of this, which is so annoying. Which I did not want to do. So I can probably I can probably salvage it. I'm gonna have to cut, tram all this, clean it up as best I can, and then probably scrape the edges off of here and here and then try to re-adhere to the new material and it should work out we'll find out but yeah that's how we pretty much do that <laughs> the factory stuff you just go and then you just grab a brush and take it all off um, and then put new stuff on it so you'll see here's the locking mechanism for the seat belt just remember you have to match this to this so you can make sure you can put that back on. Um, depending on the year of your Jetta, they will have a screw that goes right here um, that holds this whole thing in. So it will say airbag. This one doesn't have air, uh, side curtain airbag. So um, it didn't have the screw. So that's that. Uh, you saw how I took that off. It's super easy. Um, Look at the hairball. So the reason why I'm tearing all this apart because we're going to be running a all new wiring for a stereo system. We're going to be taking out all the factory stuff. So we got to make sure all new wires are ran correctly. So we're going to run speaker wire. We're going to run power wire, RCAs, uh, everything that's going to go to the trunk. Since we're going to be doing a lot of stuff in the trunk and back seat. So we're going to make sure that we already lay our stuff that we're going to be getting ready for um, the the build. On top of that, um, since we're going to run the battery in the trunk, we want to make sure we have everything in the trunk. So we're probably going to build a false floor. 
where the battery and all the other stuff goes and amplifiers and then right above it, it's going to have our fuel cell um, we'll make sure that we can bolt everything nicely and keep everything nice and organized um, if we make this race car and get rid of the back seat then we'll do all our stereo equipment here and then keep a battery just a battery in the trunk with the fuel cell in the back and that's pretty much it so we'll go once we get go forward with that we'll figure all that out um, so now half the headliner or a quarter of the headliner is removed um, so you see here that's all it is here and the rest of it still being held uh, by the other stuff over there so keep pulling all this out last but not least is this guy and then you'll see what to do next so now we're here with the a pillars again uh, the guy who did this before didn't <laughs> they weren't even clipped in none of these were pushed in so and the reason why that happens if you look here look how much material he put on here this is preventing it to go against the actual body so uh, this thing weighs a ton holy crap this is actually has metal I've never seen it with metal in it that is actually impressive the uh, GTIs are all plastic very very interesting I was wondering why this weighed so much so yeah but that's one of the big issues is when you guys when you guys wrap them you have to trim them all the way to the edge because if not you're going to just get this weird bubble and it's not going to let you install these correctly and it's really annoying because this could have been a really really nice job if you're taking your time See? All you could have done is cut there and then use an exacto knife and just cut straight down and that would have been done. Job well done, you know? It's a job halfway done. <laughs> that's out. So now that side's done. We just gotta pull this pillar. More likely it's the same thing. Yep. Not even bolted in. Ah, so annoying. Okay, I'm just done enough with my ranting. Take that cover off, and there should be two screws down below, plus a bunch of missing bulbs. <laughs> um, do that. You pull this down. Once those, there's two screws right here that hold this up. There's a screw here that holds this as well, and then headliner should be come right out. So I won't be able to put uh, show you guys how to take it out fully, but I'm gonna hold you guys here. You guys can see why I dislike it when people don't do headliners correctly. Because you run into the risk of ripping and damaging the headliner. So, see how like gang, how glued on and tight that is? Um, I gotta pull on the corners right now and see if I can loosen it up a bit. And then hopefully the adhesive will be friendly with me and not let me damage the headliner. So I'll show you guys in just a minute. Hopefully I don't break All it. All right, so headliner's out. Uh, a lot of glue here. So it was a little pain in the rear to get it on there. He has tape on here for some reason. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Um, so yeah, we got a lot of work to do to get this headliner taken care of and actually worked. Uh, we're gonna see if all the um, Jeez, look at this. Oh man. I mean, one thing is another. Okay, no big deal. I can take care of that. Um, so, for this headliner to um, come out, you would say, hey, just push it through the, um, the trunk. Problem is, you're going to have to like bend it a good four inches for it to go out. So, what we do is that since the seats are out, you kind of angle it above there. This. And then, there we go. And then you just yank it through the passenger seat. You don't have to bend it at all to get it out. Maybe a little bit, but that's it. Nothing crazy. Now, what we're going to do is put this in the sun for a little while so the uh, adhesive gets soft so I can yank it off. It's a good looking headliner, don't get me wrong, but 
done ways I did not want it to be done. So we're going to have to uh, redo it all and uh, make it look better. So the pillars, uh, good thing is that they're not hard to, to skin. Headliner's out. So we're going to grab a big bag and pull all our stuff or a box to put all this stuff in. Same with that. Then we're going to give this a really, really good cleaning. And then the next step is to, we're going to get the center console removed, uh, cleaned out, see what uh, wiring was done, because I can see there's some wire right there done. Oh, there's a random wire here that's not factory. Um, so we want to see what's done underneath that center console, um, see if they did anything bad to the car. Uh, hopefully nothing crazy and then I can figure out and repair um, and then we're gonna pull out this factory stereo um, which is super important pull out that glove box we're pretty much gonna pull out everything underneath right now uh, we might again we might pull out the dash I'm gonna see what I can do to clean it but if it doesn't clean up nicely we're gonna we're gonna replace that dash for sure um, we're gonna pull the steering wheel out since we don't need it. Sell that to somebody who would want it. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely that's what's gonna happen right now. Uh, what else is there? What else is there? Nothing else that I can think of at the moment. So, that right now concludes the DIY to remove your headliner. As you can see, we removed the entire headliner. Uh, next DIY we're gonna do is um, the rear hatch cover, maybe, I don't think you really need a DIY for that, I mean it's three 13 millimeter bolts and I think it just comes right out. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll actually, no, we'll do a DIY taking this out and this out, center console for you guys, and then we can go from there. Uh, actually, you know what, I got a perfect idea. We're going to take this out, this out, all the uh, side trim, because we have to pull out that side moldings uh, to run wiring. So yeah, that'll be our next DIY. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in for learning how to remove Mark IV Jetta seats and a Mark IV Jetta headliner. The next um, part of the DIY when we get to it is re removing the sunroof and fixing all the, the drainage tubes because these are common, notoriously common for uh, leaking. So what we want to do is uh, fix all the seals, uh, blow out all the gutters because they have, uh, you have to blow through them. To see if there's any um, gunk going through it to begin with. If you don't see anything coming out, then we're good. Because uh, they drain right there at the body. You see that rubber grommet that's right there by the door. They drain through there. And then these drain through somewhere back here underneath the car. So what we got to do is you blow some air through that hose. And see what comes out. And then um, pour some water and see if it actually stays. Alright. Thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you guys next time.